Well, here we go with lesson 20, section 7.4. We're going to continue and wrap up our discussion of multi-angle formulas, and this will be probably one of the shortest lessons uh, that we have in the whole series. So a reminder of where we came from from the previous lesson. These are the three double angle formulas. I'll remind you that cosin 2u has two more that are very good that we normally don't give you, but you see quite often as they substitute out cosine squared or sine squared using the Pythagorean identity. So these are the basis uh, of this lesson. Here's our first problem. Find all solutions of the equation at interval 0 to 2 pi. And we have cosine t minus sine 2t equals 0. And the problem we have here is we have 2 and 2, 2t and t. And so we're going to take out the sine 2t and substitute it with the double angle formula for sine. So I take out sine 2t and I put in its place 2 sine cosine t. And that's a straight substitution from uh, a previous slide. Now, I have two terms here at the left of the equal sign, and they both have a cosine in common, so I factor out a cosine, and I have 1 minus 2 sine t. And then I set them both equal to 0, and this should look very familiar to you. We've done this a lot of times. And when I do that, I end up with cosine t equals 0, and 1 minus 2 sine t equals 0. And when is cosine 0? Well, that's at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. On the other side, I have I have to subtract 1 divided by negative 2, so I have sine t equal a half. And when I do that, uh, I have that that happens twice, once in quadrant 1, once in quadrant 2, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So our four answers are pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. All right. Let's try the next one. It says cosine 2 theta minus tangent theta equals 1. And so we're going to have to use the cosine, uh, the double angle formula for cosine in this one. Well, there's a lot going on here. Look at that. So we take cosine 2 theta, and we change it to cosine squared minus sine squared. We still have the minus tangent theta and the 1. A lot of problems here. I've got three different functions going on here. So I decided to take cosine squared and change it to 1 minus sine squared. And so I do that in line 3, and then I take and I combine the two negative sine squareds, and I have negative two sine squareds, and then I should track one from both sides, so I did two things there in line four. So I've got negative two sine squared theta minus tangent equals zero, and so I decided to multiply through by negative one to make my life easier, and I have two sine squared plus tangent equals zero. Next step, I decide to change tangent into sine over cosine, and then I multiply both sides by cosine. And when I do that, I end up with um, 2 sine squared cosine plus sine equals 0. So I multiply all three terms, the 2 sine squared, the sine over cosine, and the 0 by cosine. Now, they both have a sine in common, so I factor out a sine. And I have sine theta times the quantity 2 sine cosine plus 1 equals 0. So sine theta goes, is equal to 0, and 2 sine theta cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. Well, sine theta equals 0 at 0 and pi. So that side's done. The other side, unfortunately, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got 2 sine theta cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to have to move on to the next slide and get some work done just on that half. So what you see here is I've got a big old arrow pointing up to the upper right. I am just now breaking off that right side. 2 sine cosine is sine 2 theta. So I set sine 2 theta equal to, and then I should track the 1 to the other side, and this should look familiar. This is a, this is a multi-angle problem. I am going to use the pi ends here. Um, so sine 2 theta equals negative 1. That happens at 3 pi over 2. That's when sine is negative 1 plus 2 pi n. So 2 theta equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. I divide both sides by 2, and I get 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Now I need to start putting values in for n until I get past 2 pi. So I put 1 in for n, and I'm sorry, I put 0 in for n and get 3 pi over 4. Then I put 1 in for n, and I get 7 pi over 4. And when I put 2 in for n, I get it, it's too big. It, go, it goes over 2 pi, so I'm done with that. So I ended up yielding two answers over there from the second half. 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 came out of the to the, to the, the right half of the second equation. So we ended up with four solutions. 0 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 
and 7 pi. I'm sorry, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right, let's do a story problem here. If a projectile is fired from ground level, initial velocity of v feet, v feet per second at an angle of theta degrees with the horizontal, the range r of the projectile is given to you by that formula. We will always provide the formula for you. So range is equal to the initial velocity divided by 16 times the sine of the angle and the cosine of the angle. So then the problem goes on and says if v equals 100 feet per second, approximate the, the angles that will result in a range of 300 feet. And notice it says angles. There will always be two answers to these problems. Well, there are three variables. There's big R, there's initial velocity, and there's theta. We have to give you two of the three. So in this case, we gave you R, and we gave you V, and we're looking for theta. So I plug these in. Uh, 300 goes in for big R, 100 goes in for V, and I multiply both sides by 16, and I take 100 squared and get 10,000. I divide both sides by 10,000, and I end up with 4,800 equals sine theta, cosine theta. Well, I'm looking for theta, which means I normally do an inverse function, but we don't have an inverse sine cosine key. We have an inverse sine key. We have an inverse cosine key, but we don't have an inverse sine cosine key. So it looks a lot like a double angle on the right side. Look at that, sine theta, cosine theta. We're just missing a 2. So let's put a 2 in. You can multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and we can turn the right side into 2 sine theta, cosine theta, which should look familiar. All right, so I move that to the upper right. That's a very nice arrow I put there. So 0.48 equals sine theta, cosine theta. I multiply both sides by 2. I get 0.96 equals 2 sine theta, cosine theta. 2 sine theta cosine theta, ah, that should look very familiar. 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta. Hey, I can do this now because I got 0.96 equals the sine of some angle, happens to be 2 theta. I can do inverse sine and I can identify what 2 theta, the value of 2 theta. So 2 theta equals the inverse sine of 0.96 and there's two answers here. When you do inverse sine of 0.96, your calculator will tell you 73.74. But remember, inverse sine only returns angles in quadrant 1. Over in quadrant 2, there's another angle that has a sine of 0.96. So 2 theta also could equal 106.26 degrees. Any angle, angle in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, that is 73.74 degrees off the x-axis, regardless of whether it's quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, will have a sine of 0.96. So there are really two values for 2 theta. There is 73.74 and 106.26 degrees. So 2 theta is equal to both of those. I divide both sides by 2, and I get two answers, 36.9 and 53.1 degrees. So there are always going to be two answers to these equations. Well, let me tell you why. If you were to go to 45 degrees, that would maximize the range. If you go above 45, you loop high and you go short. If you go below 45 degrees with your angle of elevation here with the projectile, you'll get there in a real hurry and you'll also get there short. So there's always going to be two answers to these questions, but look at the two answers. Here's the other here's the here's the thing that's always going to be true. They're always going to be complementary to each other. If you add 36.9 and 53.1, you get 90. Yeah, the two answers will always be complementary. So what most students do, and I don't have a problem with this at all, is they only find the small angle. They do inverse sine, divide it by 2, they get 36.9. And to find the other angle, they just subtract it from 90 degrees. It works every time. But I want to warn you, there are always going to be two answers to this question. Well, I don't know how short that was. There wasn't a whole lot of slides. Some of them I think I got long-winded on, but those things happen. Uh, we are done with Lesson 20. Uh, knock out the homework.